Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is episode 2 of my Black Ops Weapon Guide. Let's get started. In this episode, we're covering the first available assault rifle, the M16. It fires a three round burst and is available for use in multiplayer right from the start, as part of one of the default classes. The M16 was first developed by American company Armalite, under the guidance of now famed small arms designer Eugene Stoner. Known as the AR-15 when it was developed, the weapon wasn't known as the M16 until after Colt Firearms licensed the design for military production. The first rifle saw service in Vietnam in November 1963, with the experimental XM-16E1 models issued to troops in the field by the end of the year. First impressions were not good. A few reliability issues with both rifle and cartridge led to the M16 becoming universally disliked among soldiers. It wasn't until the standardisation of the M16A1 model in 1969 that the issues were largely resolved. The version of the M16 depicted in Black Ops has the outward appearance of the A1 variant. However, these original rifles were semi or fully automatic only. The burst fire trigger group wasn't seen in standard issue rifles until the M16A2. Standard magazine capacity is 30 rounds. Extended magazines have 50% more at 45. As with most modern Western assault rifles, the M16 fires the NATO Intermediate 5.56 by 45 mm cartridge. In game, the damage dealt is relatively high, on par with the other high damage automatic rifles, needing just three shots to kill to the body within effective range. This means that the M16 is capable of killing in one burst, although all shots have to connect unless two strike the head. Outside effective range, a two burst kill seems more likely. Hitting the head three times with a single burst is practically impossible at such range. The M16 is capable of putting about 450 rounds per minute down range at full tilt, much slower than any of the automatic rifles, although the burst fire mode does help to ensure greater accuracy than indiscriminate automatic fire. The recoil has a strong upward pull, often sending a portion of your burst above your target's head, although the recovery means the next burst will usually finish the job if you remain on target. Other handling characteristics are favourable. As with most of the assault rifles, you can aim down sights in a quarter of a second, and the reload is on the swifter end in its class at two seconds. The iron sights are reasonably good on the M16, but the optical attachments can provide the edge in precision, and with a burst fire weapon, that can make all the difference. The red dot and reflex are functionally identical. The only difference is the appearance of the optic and the different areas which they occlude. In fact, as far as zoom and recoil level are concerned, they are the same as the iron sights. So your choice of close range optic really comes down to personal preference alone. The two long range optics are fairly easy to control on a burst fire weapon. The only downside is the slower aim time and difficulty in acquiring targets at close range. The ACOG is the better option of the two, preserving peripheral vision and allowing precision shots at long range. The recoil might mean a portion of your burst will miss, but at longer ranges you should be able to get a few aimed bursts off before the enemy is able to retaliate. The ACOG makes for a great counter-sniper weapon. The infrared scope is similar, although considerably more difficult to use up close. It's great for picking out enemies in the distance that might otherwise be hard to spot, but you need to adopt very conservative tactics otherwise. The IR scope effectively turns the M16 into a burst fire sniper weapon, and you have to play to its long range strengths to remain effective. The non optical attachments serve a variety of functions, and dual magazines have two very useful features. The first benefit is a faster first reload, useful if you're not running sleight of hand. Every other alternate reload will benefit, with a normal reload in between. Secondly, you get additional magazines with this attachment negating the need for scavenger and permitting longer streaks without running dry. Dual mags are invaluable on many weapons, although the relatively quick reload and the frugal usage of ammunition of the M16 render them less useful here. Still, if you're comfortable with the iron sights, they remain a strong choice. Extended mags give you longer between reloads, but with the burst fire weapons, this isn't such a useful trait. It's a rare occasion that you'll need more than 10 bursts in quick succession. 45 rounds is better than 30 though, and although you don't get any additional ammunition as you would with the dual magazines, the extra firepower can sometimes make the difference. 
If stealth is your preferred tactic, then the suppressor should be your attachment of choice. Although bear in mind you will lose a significant portion of your effective range by doing so, meaning that you'll often need a burst or two more to kill at long range. The M16 has the longest effective range of all the assault rifles when unsilenced, so generally I'd advise against the suppressor to preserve this unique advantage, and to ensure greater lethal potential per burst at middle range. The underslung attachments can round out the close range performance of the M16. The master key is far better in tight interior spaces than the M16 itself, and although weaker than the primary shotguns, can be used situationally to your advantage. Damage is relatively low, and in some cases two or three shots will be needed to kill, but it's much more forgiving than trying to land the burst on a fast-moving target at close range. The shotgun is the more consistent choice when compared to the other close-range underslung attachment. The flamethrower is a little more powerful, but ammunition is scarce, and there exists a counter to fire in Flak Jacket Pro. Still, against unprotected opponents it's devastating, and requires little precision to be effective within range. The third underslung attachment is the M203 Grenade Launcher, a familiar choice from previous Call of Duty titles. It's an effective tool against enemies holed up in buildings or lurking around corners, but as with the flamethrower, beware those with flak jacket, it's a very effective counter. Still, there are a large proportion of people who run an alternative first perk, so the grenade launcher can still be an effective choice, albeit not a reliable one. Overall, I'd recommend you elect one of the precision optics with the M16. Precision is key when using the burst weapons, and although the iron sights are good, the red dot, or ACOG, are better. The ACOG is great for a purely defensive role. Lock down a building with claymores or a motion sensor, and the M16 with ACOG will happily pick people off from a distance, quickly and cleanly. The red dot sight would be the more versatile choice, granting you slightly better ability at close to middle range, and rounding out the M16's ability for a more mobile, aggressive style. You'll want to take a pistol as a close range backup. Hip fire can be used to some effect, but in the absence of stopping power, you need all three shots to connect, which on a moving target can be tricky. A pistol, or even the master key attachment, fills this inadequacy to round out your loadout at all ranges. Grenades are up to your preference. Frags were my choice due to their versatility and slightly larger lethal radius over the Semtex. Paired with concussion or flash grenades, they make for a fairly versatile selection. Claymores or the motion sensor provide you with the close quarter defence the M16 so sorely needs. The claymores are the lethal option, but only grant you one defence. A motion sensor relies on you switching to your secondary, but lasts as long as you can protect it. For your perk loadout, with the M16 we're focusing on accuracy, lethality and survivability. The M16 is a great defensive assault rifle, and can be used to attain the higher killstreaks. So anything that helps protect against death is a worthwhile choice. The first tier perk I'd suggest would be Flak Jacket. This will reduce all explosive damage by 65%, meaning that grenades, RC cars and claymores, any explosive, are all much less effective against you. The pro version of the perk also makes you essentially fireproof, eliminating the threat of flamethrowers and allowing you to walk straight through enemy napalm strikes, suffering only a light singeing. Our second perk choice helps as far as both accuracy and lethality are concerned. Hardened increases the penetration effect of your weapon, allowing your bullets to better slice through cover to find their target. This sometimes can make the difference between a burst killing an enemy and leaving them to escape. It's no stopping power, but it's definitely worth the perk slot it occupies. Hardened Pro also helps you to remain on target when you're taking incoming fire. It reduces flinch when hit by 80% which can often mean your next burst will still find its mark. Awareness of where the enemy is located is important in any game mode, whether playing aggressively or defensively, and Hacker is the best third tier perk to maximise this situational awareness. It outlines enemy equipment in red, allowing you to see where their activity is, and to plan your moves accordingly. Hacker Pro also has a unique advantage. Being able to take control of enemy equipment after they've placed it can often work to your advantage. If you can get your hands on an enemy care package, you can steal the crate contents and leave a nasty surprise for the enemy. A booby trap more than capable of taking out a few greedy souls clustered around the corrupted crate.
Paired with Hardens, Hacker also gives you the ability to take out an enemy's claymore through a wall. And if you're lucky, you might just kill the owner in the resultant blast. The M16 is great in situations where you have the time to aim your shots over long distances. For that reason, it suits a defensive playstyle over a more mobile one. Getting caught in the open with the M16 is suicide against an opponent with an automatic assault rifle. Firing from cover should be your priority. You'll be less visible and harder to hit, so accurate fire will be much easier. Locking down a building with windows overlooking an objective or choke point will help you to force engagements on your own terms. A motion sensor to watch your back and the ability to fall back to cover upon instant fire means you will be a tough target to kill, and the ability to stay alive makes the higher kill streaks easier to attain. The M16 has the longest effective range of all assault rifles, which means unsilenced, more often than not, you'll be doing maximum damage. A couple of well-aimed bursts is often all it takes, even at longer range. It's only up close where the M16 struggles. Fast-moving targets close to your position will prove troublesome to hit, as you can't spray and hope for the best as you can with an automatic. With the right loadout, and by playing to the weapon's strengths, aimed bursts from cover over a middle to long distance, you'll find the M16 is tough to beat. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time when I'll be covering the first shotgun, the Olympia. Until then, farewell.